Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's video, I'd like to show you what I think is the most important on the remote control for your new DJI Mini 3 drone. Now, this button's available on most of the DJI controllers, but it might be located in different areas on the controller. But with the Mini 3 Pro, you have a choice between two different controllers, the brand new DJI RC controller, and that button is right here, and on the original RCN1 controller, the button is right there. So they're in similar locations. On older controllers, they're in different spots, so you may have to search for them. But that button is super important because it's your get out of trouble button. Now, there are two situations where most people will panic. The first one is you're flying in an area with a lot of debris around you, maybe a lot of trees, a lot of bushes, maybe you're near a wall. And if you get too close to that wall and you're watching through that first person view, you might panic and you might just think, well, I'll take my fingers off the joysticks. But if you're really close to that wall, a lot of times if the drone is moving really quickly, that momentum will carry it forward into that tree branch and you'll actually crash the drone. What the pause button does, the minute you hit that, it stops the drone in midair. And it doesn't just stop it, it actually reverses the motors to pull it back from some type of obstacle in front of it. Now, with the Mini 3 Pro, you're lucky that you have crash avoidance, but if you turn that off, that pause button could become really important. It's also really good if you're flying in an area and maybe you lose sight of your drone. There's a lot of trees back here and if it comes down close to the trees, I might lose sight of it for a second and I'm not sure which direction am I gonna head. Now I can look at the compass on the controller and I can see which way the drone's pointing, but I may take a breath and say, you know what, before I start flying, let me get my bearing. So hit the pause button, it'll stop it in midair. You can look down, you can spin the drone around a little bit to find open space and then fly out of that area. So the pause button's super important. That button also has a second function, which is the return to home function. So that's really important if you lose sight of your drone and you're not sure how to get it back. Now, normally you won't because you're gonna keep visual line of sight of your drone, but if you fly over there, maybe you come down behind a tree and you lose sight of it for a second, you're not quite sure where it is. So my suggestion is hit the pause button, try to get your bearings to figure out which direction it is away from you. Typically, you're facing the direction you were flying, but notice where the drone is, and at that point, spin it around a few times to make sure that you're not gonna have any obstacles if you elevate, and then hit the return to home button. Now, to instigate that, you'll tap it once to pause it, you'll tap it and hold it to instigate the return to home. And what that'll do is elevate the drone to the height you have set in the application. It'll spin it around to face the takeoff point. It'll fly back at speed to the takeoff point, hover over the takeoff point, and then descend and land pretty much where it took off. So that's a really valuable button as well. And the reason I'm doing the clip is because most of you know about the pause button, but not a lot of us practice. And the challenge is when you're panicked, when you get into trouble and you get a little bit nervous, you may not use that button. You may think, I'll just take my fingers off the joystick and I'll be fine. But it's important you develop some muscle memory to know where that button is and know to use it because in that moment of panic, you may only have a second or two to hit that button to stop the drone from crashing into something. So make sure you know where that button is and practice with it. Take it out in the field, fly it a little bit, and then hit that pause button to see how it actually stops in midair and definitely practice with the return to home. One other caution is after you do your updates for your firmware, there's a chance that that return to home height might change. So if you've done a firmware update recently, go into your settings and make sure that you've set that return to home height high enough to clear any obstacles in the area. In this area, I probably have, I don't know, 120 foot trees back there. So I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I'm at least up 120 feet for my return to home height. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll show you how the button works for both the pause and the return to home. And then I'll come back with some final thoughts. So stay tuned. Now I'll show you just how effective the pause button can be, and I'll do two passes in front of the camera. On the first pass, I'll just take my thumb off the joystick, and then we'll watch to see how far that drone skids past the point where I release the joystick. So here's the joystick forward, thumb off. That's gotta be three feet. So it basically, I took the thumb off the joystick here, and it skidded almost three feet forward. Now think about that. If you're near a tree or around a lot of bramble, and you, you see yourself heading for something, you just take your finger off the joystick, you could possibly skid into that branch and there goes your drone. So let's take a look at what the pause button does. All right, same pass. I've got my thumb on the pause button. I'm going forward, pause. Okay, so maybe half the distance, I don't know, it looked like less than a foot to me. So the effectiveness of that pause button is incredible. The other thing I'll show you, watch this. When I hit the pause button, the joystick is frozen at that point. The drone won't move. So it's not only stopping the drone in midair, it's preventing me, the panicked guy, from doing something dumb with the joystick until they take a second and actually gather my thoughts and take a breath to go, all right, all right, I didn't hit the tree, now what I wanna do. So it gives you time to sort of gather your thoughts and, and your composure and decide what you're gonna do with the drone. Now stay tuned and I'll show you the return to home next, but man, that pause button's effective. I use it a lot, so good thing to keep in mind. Return to home is another really important safety feature that's built into the DJI drones. And essentially what happens is when you take off, 
the drone freezes its position in 3D space based on GPS coordination, and in some cases, pictures of the landing zone, but it knows where it took off, and it stores that in memory. And then when you fly around this field or wherever you're flying, if you lose sight of the drone, you can actually hold the return to home button, and that tells the drone, hey, I've lost track of you, take charge. The drone will take over, it remembers where it took off, so it'll elevate to whatever height you have set in the application for your return to home height. It'll spin to face the takeoff location, fly back to that takeoff location, and actually descend right over the mat. Now, the Mini 3 Pro doesn't have precision landing built in yet. I'm assuming that's coming with a firmware update down the road, but a lot of the DJI drones will land exactly where it took off, pretty much within a quarter's distance of that takeoff point. With the Mini 3 Pro, it's gonna get close, but I like the fact that it gets back, and all I really care about is I can see it, and I can navigate using the controller, so that works really well for me. So what I'm to do now is send it downfield. I'll elevate it, I don't know, 80 feet up in the air. I've set the return to home height at 120 feet. I'll hit the return to home button and hopefully it'll fly back, spin around and come down right on top of the mat. So let's give her a shot. The home point has been updated. Please All right, we'll send her downfield. Sounds good. Now I'm facing away from me at this point, so I'm gonna hit the return to home button right here and I'll hold it. Now listen. Go home, and it's beeping. So the drone right now is elevating. Again, 120 feet is the return to home height. It's going up to 120 feet, and it stopped at exactly 120 feet. It's spinning around to face home. It's coming back, and it looks like it's pretty close to the mat. It's hard to judge it. Still going, still thinking. It's kind of zeroing in on the landing zone nice and slow over top of the mat. It's gonna make a few adjustments to come down. And that's really important too, because if it automatically lands, you wanna make sure it doesn't come down in some bramble, bramble that's off to the side. So right now it's right over top of me and it stopped. And it's sitting there thinking, now it's adjusting a little bit. It went back just a tiny bit and now it's descending. So it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. But again, imagine if I lost this over in the trees and I have no idea where my drone is at that point. I can hit the return to home and have it come down. Now I'm gonna cancel the return to home because it looks like it's gonna be off the mat. It is, so let me stop that. So it's pretty close, it's not exact, but again, all I need is for the drone to get back close enough where I can navigate the landing and I can bring it down myself nice and safe. Now again, the precision landing might be coming for this drone. I'm sure it is from DJI, I haven't seen it yet, but that's gonna be a firmware update. Let me just land it real quick. Landing. That's gonna be a firmware update where you can update the firmware on the drone through the application and hopefully they add precision landing to it. I don't know why they wouldn't because there are downward facing cameras on it, which is one of the key components to take a picture of that mat. But I'll keep testing. I'm always checking the new firmware that comes out, but that's what return to home is all about. And again, between the pause control and the return to home, it really is a set of safety features that can protect your drone out in the field. Now stay tuned, I've got a couple of final thoughts. I hope those two examples were helpful. And again, I'm doing this clip because we have a lot of new flyers that are watching the channel and maybe your brand new DJI Mini 3 Pro drone just arrived or some other new drone arrived from DJI that you're starting to fly. And you may not quite understand what that button does. And again, in my opinion, I think it's one of the most important buttons on the remote control because it keeps you out of trouble. So when you're flying, if you get into a situation where you're not sure of exactly what's going on, you've got a lot of debris around you, tree branches and other things, hit that pause button, take a breath, and think about your surroundings and figure out a way to get the drone out of that danger zone. And if you lose sight of the drone downfield, you can hold that return to home button, it'll start beeping, and that drone will elevate, fly back home, and land pretty much where it took off. But my suggestion is, when you're out flying next time, it's one of those functions that a lot of people don't practice. And that muscle memory of knowing where that button is can really save you a lot of trouble from crashes and lost drones. So take a few minutes every time you go out to fly, let it fly around, hit the pause button, get a feel for how quickly it stops and how it stops in midair, and use the return to home function. And be sure to check that return to home height, because again, if you do a firmware update that probably changed during that firmware update and it may be lower than you expect and the challenge there is if it's set at 80 feet and you've got a tree that's 100 feet between you and the landing zone or between you and the drone it's going to introduce itself to that tree on the way back so check all that stuff out and again crash avoidance will help with most of this but knowing where that pause button is can really save you a lot of headaches so that's pretty much it for today thanks an awful lot for watching and hopefully you found this helpful and until next time <laughs> happy flying